All righty. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> and here she is. Hello, Maya. How are you? Hi, Karen. I am great. I hope our connection is okay. It sounds good to me. It sounds really uh, clear at my end. I need to get a microphone like yours that comes through beautifully. <laughs> Cool. Hello, everyone. I see we've got one viewer. Give us a love and a like, everybody. Let us uh, let us know who's joining us. And um, the, if you give us a love and a like on the on the live video, it'll just send the notification out to more people, and they'll be able to find us. Um, I'm so so excited today to be joined by the lovely Maya Acosta. Um, Maya is the co-leader of the Plant Pure Communities Pod in Texas with her husband, Dr. I'm hoping I'm going to say his name right, Rizwan Bakari. Yes. Got it? <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Where they host uh, plant-based community events and help people wanting to take control of their health, which is an amazing thing. I love it when I hear about all these community events going on. Um, and May is also a member of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, as well as the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Um, Say hello to Dr. Neil Barnard for me. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I, just as an aside note, for a project once I had to do a vision board and I took a picture of him with, um, I think it was, is it named Jenny or Jenny from um, Sweet Potato Soul? And then I adopted a photo of me with, um, uh, what was her name? Um, one of the supermodels, anyway. <laughs> Oh, um, Heidi Klum, and I, I took out two photos and I put them together. And look, if you're not looking too closely, it actually looks like a photo of the two of us. So <laughs> one oh, day I want to meet him. Um, but anyway, um, and you're also doing Walk for the Doc. And Maya is also uh, the host of the Healthy Lifestyle Solutions podcast, which has recently re uh, relaunched, hasn't it, um, at, with a new name, new, um, I guess, a new vibe. Um, and it's a great platform, which is all about um, uh, helping to educate people on how simple lifestyle modifications can actually help uh, prevent, halt and reverse a lot of diseases. Um, so I'm really excited to have her here today. Now, if you didn't see me post a couple of days ago, um, I actually featured on one of Maya's recent podcasts. Um, I posted a link to it in the group. Um, so if you wanted to go and listen to that at some point, just literally scroll back. Um, uh, I'll probably have to put a hashtag somewhere um, so you can find it easily, but it, it'll be recently in the group. Um, so um, I'm really, really excited to have you here today, Maya. <laughs> Um, and I thought maybe we'd start off by just, um, I always love hearing people's stories, like what brought you to plant-based eating? What was it that, you know, um, brought you to this world? Uh, was it, yeah, tell me, tell us your story. Sure. Uh, first of all, Karen, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I had such a wonderful time when I had the opportunity of interviewing you and hearing your story. It's always so beautiful to learn how other people come to this way of living. So thank you for having me and thank you for doing this um, and creating a platform for your community as well. Um, so it's interesting. I mean, I could be all over the place with my story, but basically um, many people think that because I married a physician that I learned about this way of living because of him, but it's actually the other way around. I brought him on board and um, in many ways, I'm proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad I can't get more physicians on board. Um, trying, but, you know, <clears throat> that's right. Um, I would say that it all started without spending too much time. I, I can identify with you when you've shared your story of disordered eating. Mm -hmm. So for many, many years when I was younger, I feared this whole idea of gaining weight. And, um, and I say that reluctantly because I'm at a point in my life where I never want to shame anyone and their weight. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to make any kind of association and judgment about it. But for me, the, what I was seeing in my own family who crossed over, you know, from Mexico, once we were established here in the States, I started to see the women in my family gaining weight. Mm -hmm. And I started to see a lot of dieting happening. So I developed this obsession about food. I began to label food as bad. I began, began to restrict at a very early age. Um, that eventually led me as I was pursuing a psychology degree in college 
I, it led me to take um, a nutrition course because I wanted to sort of heal my relationship with food and I wanted to gain weight safely. Like again, weight uh, was something that I feared a lot. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, that kind of started me down this path of letting go of certain products like meat, red meat and pork in college. And then, and I feel Karen, like I spend the rest of my life trying to figure it all out. Yep. Until the last, <laughs> right? Yep. Like, <laughs> Until the last six years was when I, um, around that time, I, my husband and I, a few years ago, but we were living not far from a Whole Foods uh, grocery store. And I would walk over basically to get exercise, but I'd walk over from where we lived and do my groceries and head on home. And sometimes I would uh, go around the section where they have the books and the literature and all of that. And I learned about the START solution. So mm -hmm. that was kind of like one of my first exposures, along with a, a YouTube influencer who also was talking about how you can be very healthy, energetic, you can be an athlete, without consuming any animal protein. So that kind of started everything, the, this whole idea that we don't need meat. And as you know, Karen, it, um, especially working like as a nutritionist, you know that there's always so much emphasis on having the protein be animal based. And so for me, it, I began to shift this whole idea like what I don't have to do that I can eat this way. So that was kind of like the beginning of how it all started. That's beautiful, beautiful. And then um, what was your next step from there? Like, um, did you go straight to whole food plant based from that point? Or did you find other, other people who sort of helped you transition further into whole food plant based? So it was the book, The Start Solution. That okay, I so initially... you right then, did you? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, did you? It was that the book that made you go straight into whole food plant based? No, actually, hmm. what happened was, um, I'm got a cough. <clears throat> Excuse me, got to clear my throat. Uh, so what happened was I picked up the book. I didn't even know it was vegan. Like I didn't know oh. much about the whole thing, but I started to try out the recipes. And being that, you know, I'm the main cook in the home. I, and my husband had two young girls at the time. I was making these, you know, recipes, thing, you know, feeling very proud of myself. Like I'm making healthy food and like no one wanted to touch my food. <laughs> so <laughs> that was so discouraging. So I didn't really jump on board at the time because what I used to do with the girls to bond with them was I would cook their favorite restaurant meals at home. Yeah. Like I, you know, that was my way of connecting. So the family came together in the kitchen. And so when I started to shift things and, re and I started to replace eggs with flax seeds or and things like that, it didn't really sit well with everyone. Um, and then fast forward maybe a year after that or so, I learned of this influencer by the name. She used to go by the Banana Girl. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. Girl. Um, I, I don't, I've not followed her, but I've heard of her. Yeah, okay. Yes. And I want to say she's Australian. Yes. So um, anyway, so I learned about her. She at the time was a big influencer in the vegan community. And I just was watching her videos back to back, back to back. And she would go over what celebrities ate. And then she would basically say that's not the right way. And then one day I just did it like just from watching her. I just said, OK, I, I, I'm going to try this raw till four. You probably are familiar with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try this and this is what I'm going to do. And I did it. I just started, I, I would have large and large amounts of papaya and mango and um, bananas and all the foods that they say that are, you don't want to cook because you don't want to destroy the nutrients. Do yeah. that till 4 PM and then have whole foods, you know, but uh, you know, cooked meals. And then that's what I did. I did it at the time we were traveling a lot. So that became very difficult. And it took my husband another year to come on board and it was basically because he was sitting back watching me going what the heck are you doing <laughs> okay so, <laughs> and so if you want i can keep going on terms of how he came on board yeah actually i'm i'm fascinated because i've got a couple of questions there for you that i know that are big questions that people have and one is how did you cope with um you know how did you eventually get your husband on board how did you cope with um, the family and you know them not being on board to start with and also how did you cope with traveling while eating this way so why don't you start with your husband sure so uh, very difficult uh, because I started to learn about the animals very yeah. very difficult to watch my husband still make certain decisions but I realized that if I was cooking at home 
he would eat whatever I would eat. Um, so, but it's amazing that I was not resentful or angry about it, just kind of bothered, mm -hmm. bothered because the ethics started to kick in, but I somehow had this faith that the transition would happen. Um, and what did it for him was that same Whole Foods. <laughs> one, <laughs> one day I heard that Rip Esselstyn was doing his book tour and that he was going to come by Whole Foods. Yeah. And so I invited my husband along with another couple. And that particular couple, the, the man, he was a firefighter. So it was my way of trying to motivate and create a group like, let's all go and let's just see what it's all about. They're going to include some meals in there. They're going to give a lecture. And so we did. And so I didn't know this at the time. My husband sat there, listened to the lecture. But after he started sharing his story, that's when I it really uh, came to life that he was actually insulted and um, almost angry uh -huh. that a firefighter was telling him that the same disease that he was trained to treat could be reversed. Oh, no. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he was, he was insulted. And, um, mm. and so but never told me anything like that never went against me because I am into more other, you know, kind of other holistic practices. So sometimes my husband is a little bit um, skeptical about these things. But he instead, got a copy of the China study started reading it and going through he read Dr. Esselstyn's book on preventing um, heart disease. And that did it doing as a scientist, reading the research, uh, the literature, learning about the evidence that did it for him. So I was just like, yay. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? And a, a lot of men are very data focused, fact driven, data focused, they need to see the science. Whereas we women, we're sort of more emotional and feeling and like we need to feel into our bodies and experience what's going on. It's, it's quite different, isn't it? It <clears throat> is. That's a very good point that you made because, because I tend to go, we've spoken about intuitive eating mm -hmm. and I tend to be a feeler. Like I feel mm -hmm. how I'm feeling. I feel the side effects of what I eat or when I don't sleep or anything that's happening, I'm paying attention. Yes. Like I've said in the past, like if I get a headache, I always ask, am I thirsty? Yeah. Um, or have I not slept enough? Where uh, some people may not even tune into what's happening. And so for him, it was the science, but it was also the literature as, um, from a perspective of someone who was an athlete for many years and played sports. Yeah. He was very driven. He thought he was doing the right thing, eating the lean meat, eating whatever, you know, uh, people that are at the gym all the time are told to eat, doing the protein shake. So mm -hmm. that was what he believed he was doing. Um, he believed he was doing the right thing. He was slim, you yeah. know, and that's another misleading thing is that we always so we think that being slim, slim or thinner means being healthy, but that's yeah. not always the truth. That's absolutely right. We never know what's going on uh, in between those arteries, do we? Right. <laughs> so talk to me about um, the girls. Um, and you said they weren't on board to start with. And I know there's a lot of people out there who sort of like, oh, I'd want to go whole food plant based, but the family, the, the children, they're just not on board. How did you cope with that situation? So this one was even tougher because they're not my girls. Yeah. And so we're kind of, I, I considered a blended family, even though my husband and I, we don't have children together. But um, the hardest thing about that was that I did not, I wanted to respect the choices and the boundaries that they have created. I never wanted to disrespect their mother, their grandmother, or family members mm -hmm. that are still continuing to eat a certain way. They are, um, they have a background as Pakistanis of yeah. eating these rich, delicious Indian and Pakistani dishes, yeah. <laughs> um, which I learned initially when I met my husband, I asked his mother to teach me his favorite dishes. And there was a lot of meat and there was a lot of ghee and a lot of oil. So I knew what the foods were about. And, um, and that's the way the girls have been raised. And um, I didn't want to judge that or push them away by telling them that's not right anymore. So that was the most difficult time. And I, I actually emotionally felt the distance when mm -hmm. we made the change. Um, we stopped spending time in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like they were questioning us, like, what the heck is going on with you guys? Is this just a fad? When are you going to come out of it? And so 
um, what I did was I decided to focus on myself and my husband. And then I had to focus on creating healthy and tasty foods that they would eat, even if they didn't want to go fully and they still haven't, you know, have not fully made the change. But it was difficult for me from time to time when they would come mm -hmm. over with a takeout, like a chicken burger, and they mm -hmm. would eat it in my house because I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. It's so, so hard. And I remember there was a time when I gently said, to the entire family, on this particular date, I will no longer have animal products in my home. And that was it. And um, again, I wanted to say that in a loving and supportive way. Uh, it was difficult, Karen. I mean, I don't know how people do it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because the girls went off to college and they've been living their lives. So they don't have to live under our roof all mm -hmm. the time. But mm -hmm. when the children are even younger and they're there, you know, the parents are the um, biological parents. That's even I don't know how anybody can do it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's a difficult situation. And I guess you've just got to um, go with what your gut tells you is right in the moment. And forcing someone to do something is never the way. I mean, I think of um, events with Tony Robbins where he puts up his fist like this to somebody and he says, put your, match your fist. And then he starts pushing and the other person pushes back and he goes, why are you pushing back? And he said, because you pushed me. So it's a natural <laughs> human reaction when someone pushes us, we push back. So if you try and push anybody into anything, they're just going to put up a wall of resistance. You've, it's almost like you've got to respect their decision and their boundaries and show them show them uh what's possible and and you know hopefully they will follow one day that's certainly what's happening with some of my clients at the moment which is amazing um i i will add this one yeah. about the girls um yeah. that because we have been consistent mm -hmm. and we have been we have been we are sticking with the way that we we want to live yeah. and like i said they went off to college once the second one's about to finish college so they're you know doing their thing but when they invite us to dinner or to their campus or any any other place they always check to see if there's a vegan option they always check to see if there's anything that we could eat and that means that they have now learn like they have a respect for us and consideration that we never impose on them they're the ones that are saying hey we can still eat together let me make sure that I choose a restaurant where they can also accommodate you. So I just love that so much. Like it warms my heart every time they tell us, oh, you know what? They have vegan options here. Or they have vegan options there. So if we are in a better place today. That's beautiful. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's when you know um, you've got a good bond with someone too. And and when when you know that everybody knows that this is not a fat, it's not a diet, this is your way of living, right? And they just like if they really truly um, respect you or are your friends, um, your loved ones, then they will accommodate it. It's, um, it's um, fantastic when that happens. So yes. um, talk to us also about traveling, eating. When you said initially when what you were doing, it was quite hard. So uh, I know that there are a lot of people out there who also struggle with travel and they're always going, ah, what do I do? So talk to us about what you did when you traveled. Okay, so this is a good question because, like I said, even though I read the Start Solution and I w I knew about the influencer that's Whole Food, mainly she's plant based, um, raw, but yeah. Whole Foods. Here we found ourselves traveling in places like Hawaii, which is a place where we typically enjoy traveling to, or we were at the Virgin Islands, and you can imagine in certain areas where produce is so expensive and not as available even for the locals. I don't know how people do it when they can't mm -hmm. afford the food in their wow. own area. But I, I've suddenly found myself eating um, more processed foods mm -hmm. because it suddenly it was like, oh, those are vegan enchiladas. I can have those. <laughs> oh, this is a vegan burger, even though I was never into burgers. Uh, I found this trap because I wasn't preparing Mm -hmm. um you know my first year was the hardest so i ended up my first year gaining weight and eating more processed foods than <laughs> i ever ate before i went vegan or plant based yeah. so that was very tricky um today i'm in a different place but initially it was just like the other thing too was the restaurants especially in maui yeah that is still a difficult thing to find healthy plant-based options you might have a pasta dish or salad uh so um Yes, but more and more places are starting to pop up that uh, that offer like Buddha bowls and healthy options like that. But uh, 
today it's much easier than it was six, seven years ago. But even then, it's all about planning. And that's what I initially felt to do is uh, put together a list of our favorite meals and then what I may sometimes be able to bring to the restaurant to complement some of the things that are available. Yeah. Also, what yeah, also what has helped us is staying at places like timeshares or uh, places that have kitchenettes. That way I can actually cook. Yeah. <laughs> while I'm traveling. Yeah. Yeah. Having, having somewhere where you can actually um, prepare your own food if there's nothing out there is, um, is very, very ideal. It's almost, um, I've, I've had times where I've um, stayed in little pokey little hotels that barely even have a fridge um but i've taken some i've just taken my nutribullet with me so it's le at least i can make a smoothie <laughs> yes and actually if i can add uh so mm -hmm. i just i told you that we just returned from a two-week trip on our yeah. sailboat in yeah. florida we're in dallas but we have a sailboat in florida i love it because now everything seems so easy we have our staples our go-to's and so on our very last night before we returned I had a lot of food left because now I plan too much. And uh, we met some, um, a couple of boaters. They have a married couple who have a trawler boat and they invited us on board. They are just across from us. And so they're saying, so you're plant-based. So do you even eat pasta? Cause I think there's egg in the pasta. And I was like, no, not all pasta has egg. And so what else do you eat? And I say, you know what? Okay, I have food that I wanna donate. And sailors typically do that. They donate things so um, that are not open because we don't want to be wasteful. And I said, how about I give you the food that I did not open and then you'll see what I eat. And I said, you'll see that I have bags of black beans. I have pinto beans. I have rice. I have polenta because I love that and oats from oatmeal. And so I started to tell him that, you know, explain this. And they're looking at us like, wow, OK, like you <laughs> actually have a lot of food that you eat. Yeah, I, I keep telling people there are 300,000 edible plants on this planet. There's a lot to choose from. <laughs> and that's something that's I got right. from Dr. Will Belsowitz. I would never have known otherwise, right? <laughs> right. So, yeah, exactly. there's, there's tons. There's actually tons and tons and tons to, to eat. But we all get sort of caught up in our own little selection of what we what we know it's it's like our little comfort zone of food, I guess. And then, you know, stepping beyond that can be sort of like, uh, a little bit not not scary it well, can be scary for some people but also we, we stop we don't really think about what else is available to us so talk to us about how you got caught up in all these amazing projects that you're doing um you know the plant field communities and american college of lifestyle medicine and physicians committee for responsible medicine what, where, right. what started this up for you so it really happened as a result of Riz and I, both of us, we didn't know anyone who, else, you know, no one else that was vegan. It's not like anyone ever came to us to tell us about this message. Mm -hmm. um, so we were very family oriented. It was all about the family. So we were not really getting out there and meeting new people. And I watched what really got me to want to create a group so that I can create a sense of community and connect with like-minded people was when I watched um, Plant Pure Nation um, by Nelson. Um, um, gosh, I already forgot, Nelson Campbell. <laughs> and so I had actually, prior to joining the group, I did start a group and it all started with the idea of wanting to share this information with my husband's uh, patients. So he's a vascular surgeon. And um, just to kind of explain real quickly what a vascular surgeon is, because a lot of times people think he's a cardiologist. Mm -hmm. He works on all the arteries in the body and the vessels aside from the heart. So a cardiologist will do that and mm -hmm. the brain. So a neurologist or a brain surgeon will do that. So he works on the carotid artery mm -hmm. to clear blockages when people have had a, a stroke. And then also he saves limbs. Um, most of his patients have some uh, um, form of atherosclerosis or cardiovascular disease. So a lot of his patients have had heart disease, diabetes, um, suffer from strokes. A lot of them suffer from overweight. And so when we learned this, we both mutually agreed. We were like, how can we know this and not tell the patients? 
Like, it just doesn't even make sense to not at least make it available, and then they can make a decision. Mm -hmm. So I started doing my research, and I realized that the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, which we call PCRM, they offer literature for the for clinical settings, so for the office. And so I was able to find guides that we can easily provide the patients every time um, there was a new consult. I would ask my husband, let's provide this literature and let's just tell them. And so that's what we did. I think it was in 2018, 2017, 2018, when we started telling people. And then we decided, I partnered with the library, which was just a whole nother story of mm -hmm. finding, because it was very difficult to find a place where we can actually offer these talks. Okay. Um, the My husband's vascular center is too small. We, we tried it and we could only have like 25 people. So... I had developed a wonderful relationship with a woman, a librarian, who was just as interested in this way of living. And she said, I just want to offer adult programs at my library and I can partner with you. I can bring out all the books that are available for um, our people to um, check books out. And that's what we did. It just kind of became this thing overnight where we just started doing it. We started with Riz offering a lecture, talking about what he does as a vascular surgeon, the disease that he sees. Next thing I know, I'm inviting people to talk about, to talk about like stroke rehabilitation. I started hosting movies, the documentaries that we see, as you know, like Forks Over Knives or What the Hell. <clears throat> That just became like a thing. Uh, next thing you know, people from here in the Dallas area that we had never met start to come out and participate and they tell us their story and they introduce us to other people. And it, so it was amazing. At, at some point, that's when I decided to join as a pod member with the PPC communities, Plant Peer communities. And it was really when I saw their documentary on really I guess the politics of creating change when it comes to food and how difficult it is and mm -hmm. how really to support each other, we have to start at a grassroots level. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know, we got to do it. I was on, I've been on fire ever since. It's like, I, I'm just going to continue to do this and see who's willing to, um, you know, listen to the message that they can take control of their health. Oh, that's amazing. That's such an amazing yeah. story. And um, yeah, it sounds like you guys are doing just, amazing community work um you know in your in your area <clears throat> excuse me it's something that um i've been thinking about because a lot of my a lot of my clients and a lot of people i work with are not local to me i have had a few local clients but a lot of them are in the states or in other parts of australia or new zealand and i feel like there's something that could be done locally and maybe i should touch base with you to see <laughs> yeah i think you would do a great job <clears throat> yes, I think that's awesome. I, my mm -hmm. first idea was like, um, I'm very fortunate that I am married to a physician who came mm -hmm. on board and believes in this. Mm -hmm. But that's what I would do if I didn't uh, have him is that I would be knocking on doors and trying to partner with a physician because mm -hmm. that I feel that people believe the physician a lot more than a person that doesn't have a medical background and uh, or that's not a trained, say, dietitian or nutritionist mm -hmm. because I'm a lay person and an educator. That's who I am. Mm -hmm. Um, but we also have the other experts like in the documentaries, they yeah. themselves, you know, watching a documentary and then having a discussion afterwards mm -hmm. or uh, including a panel discussion and having people stand up and sharing their personal stories that make you cry. It's like it's so much emotion. But yeah, it's uh, it's what I know works and what I love is collaborating. I love partnering with people who believe who have the same mission and passion and then it all works itself out like mm -hmm. the right people will come and that's all you have to do is start with i mean when we first started and i'll back up on that we first started with walking before we became members or a chapter for walk with the doc mm -hmm. we said we're just going to start with a walk and it rained that day and so it was just <laughs> It was, I even made t-shirts. I made 25 t-shirts to hand out to people, walk with Dr. Riz. That was what our t-shirt said. And it was just myself and Riz. And this wonderful person who is a friend of ours named Diane came out and she gathered like three or four other people and they met us at the mall and they're like, we're going to do this walk no matter what. And so they came out and I was like, here's the t-shirt. <laughs> but 
they supported us. And then next thing I know, um, we decided to partner with Walk with the Dog, who promotes us and includes us in a lot of um, their challenges. Mm -hmm. So it just, it's amazing how many people will take you under their wing because you're helping. You're helping people get healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's just a case of starting, isn't it? It's just starting and seeing where it goes from there. And you never know who you're going to meet up with, um, the connections that you're going to make and how much broader your your impact can be once once you make that start. So nice work. And now you've got a yes. podcast too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Welcome to our uh, Healthy Lifestyle Solutions podcast. Who are you talking yes. to? How long has it been going? Oh no, you've been podcasting for a while, haven't you? you this is just yes. like a uh, like a relaunch of it, really, isn't it? Yeah. Right. So what happened with that is um, it was also my idea, and so I say always my idea because my husband sometimes is like, "Oh my goodness, we have to slow down," and the pandemic really did that for us. But okay, so the podcast started when I decided hey, we should be sharing this message when we travel. Uh, because we, like I said, we were traveling a lot at the time. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, let's not just travel. Let's connect with the local community. Let's talk to them. Let's interview them. And so I think it was first uh, in Annapolis, Indiana. Um, yeah, in Annapolis, when we were there for a sailboat show, and there were some influencers that we were going to connect anyway. So that was our excuse. Let's go ahead and, and, and do this thing. And then we get to go to the parties and socialize with other sailors. But I went ahead and I did my research to see if I could connect with someone in the area that was plant based. Yeah. And sure enough, in that little area, not far from the hotel where we stayed at was a juice bar. And this lady, this wonderful girl, had already published a book and was already consulting people and working with people in terms of getting them to be plant-based. And she had the juice shop as well. So I, I said to her, um, before I even flew out, I'll take all my equipment. There's nothing you have to do, but just be available. And so that's what we did. She was like my first interview um, while I was traveling. And I had such a high, Karen, after I finished. Because for me, it was like, well, I'm here doing what we love, which is sailing, like our experience is about our hobby, sailing, yeah. but I'm also fulfilling something inside of me that's so important, which is to connect with like minded people when it comes to health. Yeah. And so yeah. that's how it all got started. That was 2018 in the fall of 2018. And, and then I started incorporating it in my travels in 2019 and doing a lot here at home. I was first doing a lot of interviews at, in person and that became very hectic traveling with the equipment. So I started doing it here at home. Then I transitioned to expanding outside of my city. So that's how I got involved with Zoom, like get, doing more and more in Zoom. Uh, so what happened was when 2020 hit, I was already kind of on board with interviewing. I, I already had reached out to people outside of my area. And so 2020 was when I decided this is what I'm going to continue to do. And I always say that I did it because I felt like we abandoned our group. We yeah. just stopped everything. Like, yeah. We had so much planned and I'm yeah. sure people tell these stories all the time, but we were set to host Dr. Michael Greger in Dallas mm. and I was going to partner with Unity Church. Mm. Um, I was going to um, set up this whole thing with other pod leaders so that everyone could have a table and everyone could share like their area where they, they support their members. Um, I was going to really highlight a lot of things happening in Dallas and we had planned another thing was um, a lifestyle medicine weekend retreat at a cabin. Yeah. With, yeah, I mean, we just had so many things that we had to cancel. Um, but the what I realized was because we had created a platform with a podcast, we could still continue to offer support. And then that's when I decided I'm going to get real serious about this and be very consistent because I wasn't I wasn't very consistent like I am today. So, mm. Oh, that's amazing. Um, and yeah, I think there's the whole pandemic um, sort of forced a lot of people into the online space, uh, but it's opened the world up to it's, it's kind of opened the world up to a lot of people's messages now, which is amazing. Um, and it's exciting. So tell us about a few of the people you've had on your podcast or, um, you know, yeah. what are some of the episodes that people should, you know, if they're um, like, who, yeah, so who are the, some of the, the, the experts that you've spoken to? What are some of the topics you've covered just to give people an idea, see if, um, 
you know, if, they, sure. if they're interested, they can uh, tap in and have a, have a listen. Yes, thank you for um, allowing me to share a little bit. Yeah, so I will say, and you mentioned it, I did go through a rebrand. So our mm -hmm. whole kind of pod name is plant based DFW. Uh, that's a whole nother story, by the way, because there was a, a couple in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, who was doing what we eventually started doing. So they were role models for us and they go by plant-based OKC. So that's why I decided to go by plant-based CFW. And so that was the name of the podcast. I never really cared for the name because I felt like it didn't really explain. Last year, 2021, um, I went, uh, in person, it was my second time going to a podcast conference, which by the way, I think I've said to you, if you ever attend one that I attend, it would be so much fun. <laughs> because okay. Give me all, the details. <laughs> well, there's one happening in Dallas in August. Uh, it, it moves every year, but every other year it comes back to Dallas because the founders are from Dallas. Okay. It, yeah, so I'll tell you more, but it's called the podcast movement and it's happening very close to my area. And so last year I went, it was held in Nashville in between all the spikes that we were having um, mm -hmm. with the pandemic. And I, they, that's where you go in to meet your coworkers, people in the same field, you share ideas, you do your 15 or 30 second pitch or whatever it may be. And I found that when I would tell people plant-based DFW, they had mixed messages like, oh, you're into medicinal, herbal medicinal things, or, or you only focus in Dallas. And so I went through a rebrand to change it to healthy lifestyle solutions, because what I was really covering was lifestyle medicine. Yeah. By that point, my husband had already been board certified in this field, which encourages lifestyle modifications to prevent reverse and halt disease so it's yeah there's so much to it it's not you know just food's a big part of it but there's so much more to how we're living that that needs to shift right so yeah that's right after we became very involved in lifestyle medicine that's where i decided that i wanted to pull my guests from i i joined the women's health interest group for aclm and started connecting with the experts there and while i speak for everyone like the podcast is available for everyone i've become more and more passionate about supporting women and and the reason being that i typically um i feel like women typically take care of everyone else like that's who we are we are the mothers we are the nurturers we we shop for the family we cook for the family and we put ourselves and our health last and i felt like the best way to support women is just to be part of a women's interest group and then interview those people that talk about menopause or cancer or breast cancer and all kinds of things that are important for women sleep hygiene um, so I typically have guests come from there. Um, and now I'm at a point where people reach out to me. So I'm constantly receiving emails from people who say, hey, I think I have something to add to your audience. I think that this would be important for, for them to hear. Um, I don't uh, bring on a lot of pioneers um, because what I want to do is I want to highlight people who today are making a difference with their patients with their communities mm -hmm. and so there are so many people that I feel my audience needs to hear from it, it, um, but I had to bring Dr. Um, uh, Dr. McDougall on my show because yeah he's one of the originals you have to yeah He's my hero. And yeah. so uh, I had the opportunity of writing. Oh, what really happened was that Veg World Magazine reached out and asked me if I would be interested in writing an article um, at the same year that Dr. John McDougall, the author of The Start Solution, was going to be honored by ACLM for Lifetime Achievement Award, which means that he spent more than half of his life creating a change and supporting the community through plant-based nutrition. And it was such an honor to be able to reach out to him and say, hey, I'd love to, um, as a member also of American College of Lifestyle Medicine, I would love to learn more about your path of what you've done to support the community. And so I wrote the article and then 
um, had him on the podcast as a result of all of that. And then, of course, Dr. Michael Greger gave me an interview because um, we weren't able to host him. And it was his way of saying, well, this is what I can offer you. Um, and so and I almost, I was very, very close to having Eric Adams on the show. Oh, okay. Right before, yes. Yeah. Oh, right before, yeah, he was elected. I Unfortunately, I was the window closed where he could no longer take any more interviews. Um, oh. But I have had in terms of, so I host um, physicians, dietitians, health coaches, people like yourself who are working with the community and have programs. So my goal is always to have a guest who can actually have something available mm -hmm. uh, to offer. Even if it's a paid course, I think that it's important to continue to offer resources for my listeners. So anyone who is doing something to support women in health, and like mm -hmm. I said, all, um, I still, you know, men can also listen to my podcast, but uh, topics related to mental health are very important to me now. Stress management, um, healthy eating. Uh, I, I do like to talk about, um, say, disordered eating or intuitive eating. I, I think it's important to continue to talk about that because women, especially right now, are living in a difficult time where dieting continues mm -hmm. uh, to be encouraged. Um, and there's too much emphasis on being skinny mm -hmm. or thin. That kind of still bothers me. So that's important. I also like having conversations about, um, you know, racism in healthcare, uh, limited resources, and how people that are most affected by COVID still do not have good access to healthcare or to healthy foods, um, you know, plant-based foods. So. Mm -hmm. Those things are very important to me. Um, recently, I had a guest. If you talk about uh, like which episodes I would recommend, I okay, this one I think you might enjoy. So I had Kaylee Anderson on. Kaylee Anderson, I met her in the Women's Health Interest Group for ACLM, and so she is. I don't have a copy with me, but she created the Plantricians Project. Uh, transition book, like the plant-based um, transi transition guide that people can access. She's also a contributor for um, the women's, uh, for the American College of Lifestyle Medicine's lifestyle book, like um, the literature. So she provides a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And so it was an honor to have her on. And then she came on and talk to talk to us also about endocrine disruptors that are found in all our personal products, including household products. Mm -hmm. And um, as women, you know, we face a lot of uh, limitations, especially younger women have fertility issues from the, you know, the deodorants they put on the skin, the lotions they put on their skin, all sorts of things that affect their health. Wow. I'm going to have a listen to that podcast for sure. Um, all of the, particularly like around the endocrine disruptors, um, that really interests me having spoken to many people and had um, uh, one of my clients had PCOS. Um, and, you know, it, it's a, such a big thing for women. I hear so many people say they've got PCOS or something to do with the endocrine system, right? And it, it is more than just the food. Like there's so much in terms of the chemical exposure in our environment today and the things that people are using um, in their everyday lives um, that they're probably just not aware of. So I'm going to have a listen to that one. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, and it's, it's interesting, Karen, because before I learned about plant-based foods, I was very much into everything else. Like, I stopped using a lot of products many, many years ago. I, I can't have chemicals in my house because I'm sort of allergic and I get headaches. So, but I used to focus on all of that and never understood the role that foods play in our health. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> I make yeah. a full circle. I'm coming back. That's right. Yeah. Once you, once you sort of start down that rabbit hole, it's like, okay, now what's next? So, so you sort yeah, of started yeah. with all the other products and then moved to food. And I guess I kind of was, I was a bit of both, but not really fully into both. And now it's probably, you know, now, you know, all my cleaners, my personal products, everything like that is um, natural, no chemicals, vegan, all that sort of stuff. I just, I want to support those businesses. I don't care if it costs a bit more money, but yes. it's better for me long term and it's better for the environment and it's certainly better for the animals and everyone wins, I think. So, um, all right. So, so talk to some about what's, you know, do you have any projects next? What's coming up next for you? I know you're going away on a little holiday again. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, my I think my cat's getting dementia. She's a bit she's a bit meowy today. Oh, 
I'm so excited that she's making an appearance. Ah, <laughs> my very loud I, 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 <laughs> Yeah, that's cute. Oh, okay, so I'm so glad you asked. Uh, I mm -hmm. don't know if uh, people will have access to signing up right now, but you know, I have said that uh, we talked about the Physicians Committee for Responsible yes. Medicine. Mm -hmm. They are starting every once in a while, they run eight week programs for people who want to make that transition. And this time they're doing it again. And Dr. Riss and I have been invited to be part of one of the classes where we mm -hmm. offer tips. And so um, the website is pcrm.org forward slash diabetes class no, you can sign me, up let me just write that down pcrm.org .org, yep slash forward, yep. Uh -huh, forward slash diabetes class yep and so this one is going to be starting soon we will be featured on april 26 i believe that's the date and it's every tuesday for eight weeks and it's free so i always want to promote and encourage people to sign up and sign up for this online series it's once a week for eight weeks and even if you cannot attend the live these are held live but even if you cannot attend them you will get a link with the zoom video for example the recording so that you can revisit but the classes are structured in such a way that you learn from the start like why you should go plant-based how you can incorporate plant-based foods um, what are the staples you should have in the kitchen what mm -hmm. are the things you should pick up in the grocery store and what are it includes a class on travel <laughs> as well and how to handle the family situation so it's uh, really a how-to and this one specifically for diabetes but we also know that this way of eating works for everything heart disease um, hypertension uh, reducing your cholesterol um, but anyway if you if you know you can sign up today and hopefully you'll start receiving the links um, as the classes are happening so that's one and then i'm also really excited about this one karen because i've never done a live a food session or a food uh demo Ooh. Yeah, um, I've done it in my own setting when we used to partner when we partnered with the library, I did, you know, uh, the daily dozen how to incorporate that and in the blue zones talk I've done that in my own setting, but I've been invited to the Tulsa veg fest, which is about four hours north of us uh, to give a food demo in Spanish and English, which I'm so <laughs> excited about because I've been wanting to now that I, I know more about this way of living. And now that I know how to support the community, I've been wanting to reach out a lot more to the Spanish speaking community in the Dallas area. And they apparently in the in the Tulsa area, they have a community as well, that could really hear this message. So that's going to be my first time doing something in a larger setting. When they did their inaugural uh, veg fest in 2019 they had 5,000 people oh, so, wow. <laughs> wow. I'm yeah. a little nervous ah! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's so, amazing. well yeah. done yeah and th that's what I'm talking about these relationships yeah. happen um, when you just you are, you're consistent and you're dedicated in terms of what you're wanting to do to support your community and then Riz was invited to give a lecture on um, you know cardiovascular DC so that's coming up those two things and the other thing that i kind of haven't really formally announced but that we're working on is that we are getting ready to create a um, lifestyle medicine practice where we can support patients in this way of living again lifestyle medicine incorporates eating plants using exercise as medicine stress management skills and also encouraging healthy relationships because that's how the people in the blue zones live the longest is by having all of this support. So our, my goal is that once we establish that physical place and start seeing patients at, during the daytime, in the evening, I would love to resume offering support for everyone else, like plant-based potlucks and more documentaries and mm -hmm. all of that. It's just, you know, and then hopefully uh, I'll learn to ask members to help me out so that I'm not doing everything because it can be a lot of work. 
Yeah, I know. I'm like, how do you find time for all of this stuff? This is amazing. Yes, yes. Wow. I, I wow. see if you were nearby, then we could work together. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Maybe it's time to move. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. So is this um, lifestyle medicine practice, is that like a physical practice? People come to you locally? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's it's probably going to be more patient or uh, physician re referred so yeah. patients mm -hmm. who actually need this lifestyle style um, so we're still working on all of it but we actually have the physical location we're working on remodeling um, we already have our dietitian I put out a whole thing um, uh, on Facebook saying that we were hiring for four pos uh, uh, positions so these are paid uh, uh, employees and so yeah it's uh it's a lot right now like when I think about it that's why I, I'm like we haven't really formally announced it but mm -hmm. at the same time it's all in the works it's yeah. all Beautiful. Um, happening already and my whole goal is to continue to do this to offer support and then and then collaborate with other experts so that I'm not doing everything I don't mm -hmm. always want to be doing the food demos for yeah. example <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you so. want to be running the business not necessarily always the, the hands-on right <laughs> yeah and then the other two things I mean so far that's it in terms right. of what I'll be doing <laughs> yeah but I love going to conferences I always say that mm -hmm. all my life I've I've gone to conferences for personal development because I love that. So the two things that I'll be attending in August, like I said, there's a podcast movement yeah. uh, conference here in Dallas in August. And then in November, I'll be going back to the conference for lifestyle medicine, um, where I'm so excited just to connect again with a lot of people that are experts in this field and the lectures are excellent. I don't know if you've ever considered attending, that would be a lot, a long distance for you, but the lectures are wonderful. So. Mm. Maybe um, maybe some time in the future, I do wanna to get to um, some of the, you know, the big conferences like that. Um, I think travel at the moment. <laughs> I just took my first trip on a plane just the other day in two years. It was a little bit, oh, wow. <laughs> and how was it? Did you enjoy it? Oh, it was great. Yeah, I went away for Easter, um, went away to a, a music festival. So it was, it was yes. fabulous. Perfect. <laughs> yes, I haven't ventured overseas yet. I think I've got to go home and see the family first um, before I head to the US. Yes. But yeah, I'd love to come and see some of those conferences and actually meet a lot of people <laughs> in person in this community. So you guys, uh, you guys think some of them. Um, <clears throat> so talk to us about where people can find you um, if they want to follow yes. you or connect with you in some way yes i always say um the, our main website so we have two websites mm -hmm. plantbaseddfw.com is the best one from there you'll learn about the podcast and then you know our walk with the dog uh, chapter that we're part of here in dallas we have halted our walks uh right now we're probably going to resume pretty soon, but we did put a lot of things on hold. Um, and then I have the healthy lifestyle solutions.org and that's all related to the podcast. Um, and then we, I put together a guide in case uh, your group or any of the listeners are interested, but it's a guide on how to prevent cardiovascular disease, which is my husband's um, specialty. And mm -hmm. it incorporates lifestyle medicine. And we threw in there 10 recipes that are for myself, my husband, and some of our local people here. Um, we all put together th uh, the 10 recipes. And I gave you a link for that, but it's um, bit, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Maya Acosta. And that'll take you to, um, if you sign up for that, the guide, you can also get on our newsletter. And then I typically like to highlight like podcast guests and the things that are happening. And I like to, on my uh, newsletter, I like to provide information um, that's happening for anyone, anywhere, so that you can have access to that. But yes, plantbaseddfw.com is the best way. And you can also email me at plantbasedmaya.gmail if you have any questions. And that's plant-based with a D, isn't it? Yes. Plant-based plant Maya. Maya. Yes. Yep. At um at where? Gmail. Gmail. Okay. All right. I've got all of those links written down, and the link for that um for your newsletter uh for the cardiovascular disease and the recipes that's actually in the heading of this um of this live. So if anybody is interested. Uh, that link is already there at the top of this post and what i'll do is i'll come in i'll pop the rest of those links um, into the comments uh, once we've finished up here so 
amazing mate it was a, a, a fantastic talking to you yeah. <laughs> hearing your story hearing everything that you've been up to you're doing amazing things in the plant-based community and yeah one day i hope i can um come out of the states and actually meet you in person <laughs> that would be so much fun and by the way this is what you know despite the fact that you and i do a lot of work connecting like this kind of helps to revive us and feel like gosh this is why we do the work that we do. Yeah, absolutely. And and we're not alone as well. Like in this time where we have been isolated, um, you know, it's very easily to feel very isolated if, you know, if you're not surrounded by a community. So this online world has sort of um, opened us up to finding, you know, more like-minded people. So it was um, amazing to be able to connect with you and other people um, in this in this community. So thank you for coming and talking to us today. And um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Anything more before thank we um, finish up today? Thank you, Karen, for taking the time for inviting me. And thank you to your listeners and your group. Um, and if you have any questions, like I said, you have all the information. But thank you again. And you too have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.